And action. Action Jackson. Fucking hell, dude. It's been a long time since I'm rock and roll. Been a long time, been a long time. Been a long, lonely, 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 lonely time. It has been a long time since we've done a podcast, but dude, we are back. Back to talk in action. About movies. Movies on the tiny screen. You're walking the fucking Jason shirt, Friday the 13th. Yeah, buddy. Camp Crystal Lake, baby. I'm rocking a Thompson House shirt. Nice. Hey, shout out to the Thompson House. They hooked me up with this shirt. Fuck yeah. For free. I love it there. Hell My favorite yeah. place. But anywho's man, if you remember way back from our last episode. I chose Sideways for this episode, man. And, you know, Paul Giamatti, Thomas Hayden Church, it's a fun time. What'd you pick, Drew? And then I picked Dope. I don't remember a lot of the people's names in this movie, <laughs> but I kind of like it. <laughs> As I know, it's Blake Anderson from Workaholics. Yep, yep, Blake Anderson, which, honestly, we'll get into that. We'll get into yeah, that. Yeah, that part's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what do you say we fucking snapshot it up, and then we'll fucking jump in? I got, like, 1,200 movies that I've watched since the last one. I've since got, it's like... Been like Almost two months or something. I've got like five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kept track of all of them, bro. That's awesome, dude. But, uh, all right, so snapshot. I don't know what to do. Oh, snapshot. I just got water in my crotch. <laughs> just a push. Uh, uh. It's toasty in here. <laughs> Is it? Is no. it warm? <laughs> no. I was about to say, it's a pretty nice day today. Yeah, though. yeah. I should have got out more. Maybe go skateboarding or something. <laughs> I, yeah, I've been seeing those posts. This is the skateboarding post. Uh, yeah, it's dude. dope. It's fun, dude. Hell I got yeah. that long board just cruising. Um... So, let me throw a movie at you real quick. Okay. This is how far it goes back. Uh, my first one on my list is, remember after the last episode we recorded, right after we watched Ready to Rumble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. That's what, how far it goes back, bro. When, what day was that on? I don't even remember. Dude, it's got to be, yeah. That's, <laughs> had to have been a fucking while ago. So, all my whole list of movies, that's where it starts from that night Damn. when we watched Ready to Rumble, Damn. which was a lot of fun. And it's like it's such a dumb movie, it's but it's <laughs> so funny, man. <laughs> yeah, I understood where you were coming from with that film. It's kind of it's goofy and silly and fun. Uh, oh, it was because of that last one was I picked a wrestler, and we were talking about wrestling, and I was like, "Oh, you seen that fucking Ready to Rumble movie?" And yep, yep. Put it on. <laughs> Let's do. I, it. I think yeah, that was my first time watching it, but you. That was one you grew up with, kind of, or what? Yeah, yeah. Because my, me and my cousin were super into WCW back in the day when we were little kids. I remember the N64 yep. WCW game, someone versus WCW. Yeah. yeah NWO. Yeah. But all right. Any other move? What did you, you watch? Um. Uh, so. Give me one. The ones I I recently. I just watched, <laughs> I was waiting on my buddy, because we were going to go see the bike riders, so I was uh, like, I need to watch a movie, and the only movie that was like fit into my schedule was the fucking new Bad Boys movie. It was not good. <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> what I expected. I was like, yep, yep, this is a dumb fucking movie with a bunch of explosions in it. Dude, Mike picked that, that movie before, the first one. The first one is actually a pretty good I movie. Didn't, it's not for me. <laughs> and I, yeah, and I, I kind of would expect that, for, but... Um, but this one, I was just like, yeah, okay. They can stop making these movies. <laughs> I know. How many is there now? 
think there's like five of them or some shit like that. Yeah. Too many. That's the answer. There's too many of those movies. All right. Well, let me see. I watched Anatomy of a Fall. Have you heard about that one? Nope. It's pretty good, dude, but it was a lot of reading, dude, because it was half in French and half in English, but... Uh, I got you, it's okay. Really, it was v- pretty damn interesting. It's like this this lady's husband falls from like the top of their house or whatever, like in the attic or whatever, and he dies, and they think she did it, and, and it's basically the whole movie you're wondering, did she or didn't she do it, and it's kind of fun. And there's a whole trial and everything, all that. What else you got? Uh, the one I wanted to talk about was the Bike Riders, dude. That was fucking good movie. You got man. Tom Hardy and Austin Butler. It's also Norman got Norman Reedus. Oh, uh, and it's got Michael Shannon in it too. Oh, he's good. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it was like an all-star cast, and everybody like. Um, and it's an interesting movie because it's based off of. Um, the book, which is based off of tape recordings. So how the movie is narrated, it's narrated by Austin Butler's girlfriend. So it's like her recounting of all the events that happened and like what she knows. Um, and so she's basically giving this reporter like inside information and the shit that, you know, the outside world would have never found out about. So it's a pretty cool way to tell the story. It's like they're just like kind of going through the entire history of how the vandals uh the motorcycle gang got started and like how it ended up like being like really bad it's pretty cool i i really enjoyed the movie yeah i thought about going to see it i'm I'm thinking about getting that amc fucking thing i've been i've thought about getting that myself thing, so yeah. where you can go see like three movies a week or something for like 20 bucks a month fuck yeah dude it's pretty good um but yeah. i was like it was one i honestly um it's like yeah there's like uh like some like actiony scenes in it, but it's mostly just storytelling. It's a movie I think that you would actually really like. Yeah, I was telling Mike how you fucking suggested it and shit, and he was like, "I'd be down to go." It's a good. It's a good. I mean, I don't know if Michael like it because Mike seems to be more into like action movies, and it's not like a super heavy action movie. It's more like story based, but I don't know. He, might, I think you, it'd be more up your alley. But Mike might like it. And that's what's up. My next one is The Lobster, which... <laughs> I know of it. Yeah, it's the, it's another one from that Yorgos Lanthimos, uh, the guy who did Killing of a Sacred Deer and shit. And it was my second time watching it, and I fucking loved it <laughs> even more than the first watch. That's how, that's how his movies are for me, man. Like I said, at some point, you got to rewatch Killing of a Sacred Deer. You'll probably like it more, hopefully. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I recommend that one. You know, Nate just watched it recently, too, and he was like, what the fuck was this? And I told him the same thing. I was like, give it some time and revisit it, <laughs> and see, then see. If you don't like it after that, then you probably won't. You know? Right. You got another one? Uh, Try not to take too much time on all these. Yeah. Man. You go again. I'm going to think about okay, it. Okay, I watched Mississippi Burning. Have you heard of that one? It's got fucking Gene Hackman and... Willem Dafoe. And yeah. It was very good, dude, for like a little bit older movie. Um, you know, a lot of racism, KKK and all that shit. Good time. <laughs> um, I could keep going if, you, if you're not I was ready. like, I mean, I, 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 like, I mean, a lot of it was just movies like I've just seen before, like, right. like comfort movies because I was so tired. Like one of them was like Deadpool, the first Deadpool movie, just because I think it's funny. Like there's shit in that movie that like really makes me laugh. Just saw the trailer for the new one when we went to the movies recently. Dude, the um, I got lucky uh, when I went to that was the best part of the Bad Boys movie is uh, they had a special um, silence your phone thing and it was uh, Deadpool and um, or Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and Hugh Jackman is like. He's just fucking swearing at you <laughs> and to like turn your phone off and Deadpool's like, hey, 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 it's okay. He's like he's like, Yeah, don't be a dick. Turn your phones off. He's like, now I'm gonna go take care of uh, Mr. Neckvein over here. <laughs> it was it was pretty good. I, I it was like a nice little surprise. That was the best part of the whole fucking movie. Uh my next one was Civil War. Uh that one that's in the theaters. I don't I don't know if it still is, but uh it was fine. I didn't care that much for it, but uh, 
You know, it's like got Chris, Kristen Dunst and Jesse Plemons and some other yeah. people. You know, it's about fucking a new civil war. And I was like, I didn't really care for it that much. But then I watched The Favorite, which is another Yorgos movie that I hadn't seen prior. And it was really good. I enjoyed the fuck out of that. Hell yeah. Emma Stone, Rachel Wise. Olivia Coleman. I still need good. to watch Poor Things, man. It's on my list. I don't, Dude, uh, I think it's on Hulu, right? Yeah. I'm going to hit so. my buddy up because he said he would give me his Hulu account. So. Fuck yeah, dude. Got any more? Or should I just run through these? I just run through them. I, I can't think of anything. All right, went, I really didn't watch very many movies. Went to the movies again with Mike and saw Ezra, that new movie about a stand-up comedian with an autistic son. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. decent. It was pretty good. It was decent. Worth the watch. Um, then I watched Capote. I'm Have familiar. you seen it? Uh, I'm familiar with it. I'm not, yeah, I don't think I've ever watched Philip it. Philip Seymour Hoffman yeah. and shit. He talks all funny. I guess that guy did too, but... Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, then I watched I'm Totally Fine, which was directed by the Kyle from uh, Workaholics. You know, the drug deal. Yeah, yeah, Carl. I guess you. And uh, it had, you know, Jillian Bell in it and shit. It was, it was all right for a new comedy movie. It's whatever. Then I watched Rango. I like Rango, dude. You fuck with Rango? I like Rango, man. <laughs> Johnny Depp and shit. Yeah. It's, it's a fun time. I watched American Animals with Barry Keoghan and that one guy who played Dahmer recently. Oh, Evan Peters. Yeah. yeah that yeah. kid's a really good actor, man. Yeah, he's good. I thought, yeah. It was kind of like action heist movie or something like gotcha. that, if I remember right. But it was decent. Then I watched Salt Burn again. I was on a Barry Keoghan tip. Um, I like Salt Burn. It's very weird. There's some very weird, disturbing stuff in there, but it, it's kind of fun, though. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Then I watched a movie called Pie. You know that one? with uh, It's... Like the number pie, the uh, <clears throat> oh, okay, yeah, 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 I've heard of it. It's a Darren Aronofsky film, I think it's like one of his first ones and shit. Did not care for it, not as good as the others. No, I don't think so. Then, uh, I ate a few mushrooms and I watched this movie called The Tree of Life. I'm familiar with The Tree of Life, I think I've seen it before. Brad Pitt and yep, yep. Jessica Chastain and it's yeah, it's like an ensemble cast and it goes through like Sean yeah. Penn, yeah, yeah. Dude, it and. The way it's filmed, because I've seen it once before, and it's just all, it's really beautiful and shit. That's what made me want to watch it. And it's kind of like spiritual, that whole movie and shit. And um, I had a good time, but I wish the shrooms would have hit me a little harder. There you go. A <laughs> um, couple more, a few more. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That's a fucking Holds classic, up, it's man. great. Fucking just classic one. Gotta love it. Um. Oh, I went to the theaters again and saw Midsummer because they had it in theaters again. That's a good one, dude. The director's cut, so there was extra scenes. Oh shit, shit yeah. man! I went I, alone, bro. Like I tried to get people to come with me, but then I was what? What? Ah, uh, man, you. What day was that on? Uh, I think it was. I think it was a Thursday, maybe. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have been able to go. Damn it. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was great in theaters. Um, <clears throat> Dude, I could I can only imagine like was there like like a little bit like more like of haunting imagery in the director's cut? Like a, I just felt like uh, it gave the story more context. I feel like got you, know? you got you, and uh, you you were able to understand the characters a little more just because you know there was just like a little that little bit of extra oomph to it. Yeah, yeah I think it worked. Uh, then I watched this movie called Our Friend. I posted about it. A fucking tear jerker, bro. Tear jerked me all the way off, dude. <laughs> tear jerked you all the way off. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. It's got, uh, what's his name? Casey Affleck and Jason Siegel. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. And they're good together. Like It's about this, this couple and... You know, husband, wife, they have a fucking, they have kids and shit, but she gets diagnosed with cancer and their friend, Jason Siegel, comes to stay with them and he helps them out like immensely and shit, helps them get through it all and it's very heavy and stuff like that. You know that shit I like. Yep. 
Last one, we went to the theaters again and saw Kinds of Kindness, bro. And oh, it was fun. That's that's the newest Yorgos movie. And, you know, Emma Stone, Jesse Plemons, Willem Dafoe. And it's it was basically three different stories, dude. And <laughs> just some weird, crazy shit happens in it. I already want to see it again. Because, you know, his movies deserve multiple watches. But, yeah, it, it's not for everyone. You know, he's my kind of weird. Your ghost. Anyways, let's jump into a movie. I'm I'm done yapping for for a second. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what do you want to get into? I want to do dope first because I think we'll probably take a little bit more time on Sideways. Cool, cool. Dope. 2015 comedy crime movie director Ricky Famuyiwa. I probably said that wrong. For the tomato scores, we got 88. <clears throat> And 83 for the audience. I think that's pretty fair, honestly. Like, And the tagline, it's hard out here for a geek. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good tagline. Yeah, but. It's good. So, this movie, this is my second time watching it. And what's it about? It's this kid, he accidentally ends up with some drugs or something. Yeah, so, um, the story is, is, um... It's about these three geeks, and this drug dealer, um, they kind of get invited to his birthday party, uh, because the the girl that the main character likes is going to be there, so he, uh, he ends up there. Well, the drug dealer, is, obviously, he's doing a drug deal behind the scenes at the birthday, and then it goes wrong, so he stashes his shit in the main character's backpack, but the main character doesn't know it. So when he takes off, he has all these guns and drugs in his fucking backpack when he gets to school. Right. And <laughs> it, it's just, a, it's one of those. Oh, and the, the, even the alarm goes off and yeah. the, the security guards just like go just because he knows he's a nerd. and he's Yeah, well, because he never causes any problems. Right. Yeah. So it's just, it's one of those movies where it's like a, it's funny because they kind of allude to the how the movie is going to go early on. It's in the very beginning when uh, the drug dealer goes, that's a slippery slope. And, and then the, he's like, he's like, you're a smart little motherfucker. What does that mean? He's like, a slippery slope is defined as, a, as one event that cascades into a series of events of, uh, of bad fortune. <laughs> and, like, yeah, and it, that is like, it's that's kind of exactly foreshadowing like how it's going to, how the movie's going to go. Totally. And it's funny because uh, all this kid is trying to do is get into Harvard, uh, and he's got the grades, and he's pretty fucking smart. So he just gets roped into like these bad, this kind of hurricane of bad situations, and it's honestly pretty fucking entertaining to watch. It's got uh, this guy's name is like Shemik Moore or something. Is the the main black guy? Yeah, yeah, and then the. Uh, one of the other main uh, people, he's been in a lot of movies. Like he was in the uh, Tom Holland Spider Man movies. To- f- Tony Revolori. Yep. Uh, the first movie I ever saw him in was uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, which I, I uh, love that. I I love that movie. I think it's hilarious. Wes Anderson stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Wes Anderson. I know you do. No, I still want to watch uh, Tannenbaum's, but I. I just don't have a lot of confidence in it because I've tried so many of his. Yeah, movies. honestly, I tell you, I tell you, I think his best one is the Grand Budapest Hotel. Maybe man. I'll try that one. That instead. one is fucking funny, but right, uh, but yeah, but I just I don't know. It's I think it's clever enough. It's funny enough. It like I it, I think it carries itself well. But um, what's what's Blake? What's his last name? Blake from Anderson. Workaholics. Dude, he has the funniest fucking scenes in the whole movie. Yeah. Like every time he's on screen, I cra- it cracks my shit up. <laughs> I know he's great. That whole the the conversation the whole when they're in there. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, well, no, it's actually when they're sitting in the dorms together, and they're he's just like, yeah, dude. He's like, as long as you don't put it in the pussy, you can put it in the, in the, any other two holes that you want. It's like he's like he's like uh. You know, they like I have. He's like I have fucked so much mouth and so much ass, but he's like, but never a pussy. And <laughs> and then uh, one of the characters is like, well, technically, doesn't that make you uh, a virgin too? Because that's like that's how these girls define virginity. He's like, no, no, you're asking the wrong questions, man. He's like, 
he's like, I don't, I don't think that's the right question. He's like, if I'm only fucking mouth and ass, he's like, does that technically make me gay? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's a funny conversation. Yeah, dude. And it's like, it's very like, what I like about it is a lot of the conversations that happen feel like they're high school conversations. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's a little bit of like that genuine feeling to it where it's like, yeah, okay. These kids did grow up in a, they're like these fucking nerds that are growing up. Cause like, I know it's like to be bullied and shit too. Like when that kid beats up the main character and steals one of his shoes, it's like, I, I remember school being pretty shitty. <laughs> like, I was like, it's pretty, pretty on point. That whole conversation I alluded to was like, you know, Blake, at, he actually fucking drops some in bombs in this movie. <laughs> And, and every time and he, he does, the girl slapped. gets sla- the girl, the main girl slaps him. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "Why can't I say it?" and shit like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking know. He's like, "Cause I'll, I'll, it's all love coming from this side." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you also get Zoe Kravitz in there. Oh, that's right. I forgot about her. ASAP Rocky. I don't really know who these people, but um, ASAP Rocky's the drug dealer at the beginning. Right. Quincy Brown, Vince Staples, Forrest Whitaker. Was he in there? Oh, he's the narrator. Yep, he's a narrator, yep. Uh, Right on. I did write, hold on. Because the first time I watched this, I wrote a little thing on Facebook about it. This is what I wrote. I wrote, it was first time watching, decent film, maybe 6.5 out of 10 in my book. Uh, it was fun seeing Blake Anderson show up in the movie. Overall, it's worth a watch, even if I don't happen to revisit it in the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, and then I made you, you watch it you again. You fucking made me do it. Yep, made you do it. But yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I wrote down that they're trying so hard to make these kids seem nerdy, but I wasn't quite buying it. <laughs> They didn't seem that fucking nerdy, you know? I don't know. Well, um, it's in context, though, right? Like, wait, like, like, they wait. like the old school hip hop? Well, that's part of it. It's because, one, they like things that are... Because they're in a band are, together? Well, they're, um, they like things that are vintage, right? And hip hop culture, at least from what I've seen, is every, it's all about what's new, right? Like, what's f- like fresh. Fresh. You gotta so, be fresh. So I think in the context of things, I think it's actually kind of on the money, because, especially like because their band is like a punk band, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's like, well, that's white shit. Like in like in like that, you know, in the ghettos, and well, I don't want to, I don't want to speak on shit where I don't live. I'm not trying to, but it just from my observations, it seems like anything that is like white. <laughs> Like like that like especially like it's music why see it seems lame and yeah. I think that's kind of the angle that they're coming at is I like guess so is like it, at least that's that's what I picked up at least about the movie is like anything that it seems like it's a white thing is is nerdy or lame if if you're like not well, white like and those those scenes when they are in the band playing and shit they do they they, they look terrible too like they don't know what I, they're that, doing holding those instruments that <laughs> that I give you like that I give you it's like they they really ham it up and you like kind of don't buy that they yeah. know how to play yeah <laughs> right. I'll give you that one I kind of noticed that too on this watch I was like yeah okay that's that's so a little out of place you just watched these movies or what no no I just all I've done is work so I haven't had time to do anything else so like all the stuff that I did watch I still like kind of like remember I'm kind of like going through the scenes in right, my head right. like. Um, that's kind of the benefit of not watching very many movies either. I can kind of like remember the story for the most part. Yeah. Dude, that's why sh- I got the notes, but I'm trying to like remember why I wrote down some of these notes. Dude, although the, uh, the other scene that cracks me up is when um, Zoe Kravitz eats the fucking Molly. And then she was like fucking running in the street naked because oh, she gets yeah. too high. <laughs> and then uh, she like ends up pissing in the bushes. And then there's that one guy on the news. She's like, man, I'm just trying to get my bagel. I ain't trying to see these crazy bitches peeing out here in the street. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I wrote down that some of the acting ain't great. <laughs> I can't spe- specifically remember which parts I was alluding to, but. That's just one of my notes. <laughs> uh, 
A lot of things that happen don't seem likely. Like when they stop the bus and he's got a gun to the bus driver's face and she just all nonchalant about it. Oh, the bus driver, his mom. That part is, seems a little, yeah. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to remember as I read this shit out. <laughs> but um, the the point the point they're alluding to though is that neighbor, like that whole like section of is like supposed to be like the bottoms, like Compton, like that kind of shit. Where it's like this kind of shit is everyday thing. There's um, there's at one point there's a scene um, in the movie where like. Maybe maybe it's a different movie, but I thought it was in this movie where they just stop somebody and the, like and then oh it's when they fucking um, stop the school bus and they come on and fucking are like terrorizing everybody on the school bus. So it's like they, they're like basically just alluding to that this kind of shit is commonplace in this like yeah. place in the city. Sure. So basically, what what happens? He gets the drug and they. Well, this he, is, he tries to give the drugs back, but they're like, "No, I want the money instead." Yeah. So what he does, what he does is kind of clever. Is he um, gets uh, Blake Anderson's character to help him hack into the system because he finds out who this main drug dealer guy is, and they hack his uh, information, and so they set all these Bitcoin exchange accounts in his name, and so technically, he got the drug dealer the money but if he accesses it then he's going to be caught by the federal like bureau like he he sets it up in a way where it's like super yeah. obvious that it's his shit so it's like really he had a clever he, plan yeah yeah it's like how it, it's like it's super it would never happen in real life but it's it's kind of like it's kind of clever because it's like yeah he's like I technically sold all your drugs and I did it in a way that I couldn't it couldn't be traced back to me and all the accounts are in your name so it's like I got you the money but if you ever access it you're fucked like and that was what the dean from that school or whatever um I think so yeah, yeah. um I don't have really a lot left to say about it no I'm trying to remember I'm trying to remember if there's anything notable I want to say about it. It's kind of just an average movie in my book, you know. Yeah, I um, I think I've watched it. I think three or four times at this point. And every the first time I watched it, I really liked it. And every time I watched it since then, since then I've just been able to pick out like kind of do what you did and just kind of pick pick at it. Be like, yeah, I was like, it's pretty obvious. Like they didn't do any kind of training to play their instruments because he's literally <laughs> he's not even like picking the strings but he's just kind of doing this motion like an air guitar right and um, it doesn't even sound like a live band it sounds like a it sounds like pre-recorded yeah, it's, yeah. it's pre-recorded like a professionally yeah. recorded which i mean honestly to be fair in most movies they that's what they do like it's very rare that you actually like they play it off like live sound so that's very much like a if you want to go tit for tat for like trying to pick it apart you most movies where there's music, you'd have to do, say that because almost in no movie do they have like live sounding music. I guess, but <laughs> he's like, "No, fuck this movie." <laughs> well, yeah, we didn't really talk a whole lot. <laughs> well, that's why I, I wanted spend to spend the whole time, the, yeah, the time I, on this one. Yeah, I mean, there's not. I mean, it's a ensemble cast. It is one of those. It's one of those spiral out of control movies where like they could just kind of hop to it's um it's not really a whole lot of story to it i kind of realized that on this watch it's literally just kind of hopping from one crazy instance to the next crazy instance it's kind of just a cascade of events and the outcome is kind of really unrealistic <laughs> we'll just put it that way yeah so but it, I think it it's, goes down a few pegs every time you watch it or something. Um, just because I've, there's just things that I noticed. Um, I, it's just not as entertaining. I think it's pretty entertaining for the first watch. You know what I mean? And every time you watch it after that, because you, um, you know exactly what's going to happen. So there's no, there's like a little bit of shock value the first time you watch it, and then there's, there's kind of, there's no. Doesn't have a lot of sustainability. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think <laughs> it's best sense. for a first watch. Yeah, I agree. 
Because, like, the, the, there's shit that I just didn't see coming. Like, the girl on drugs, like, just fucking running out of the car and, like, <laughs> yeah. peeing in the bush. Like, there's just, like, some crazy shit like that. And it's really funny on the first watch. And I was like, yeah, okay, it's kind of funny this time. But I, I knew it was coming. Although, yeah. the other scene that makes me laugh every time is when the, you know, how the guys that stop the bus, they eventually end up catching up with them. But they're with that, the one Dean's son. And they're... They're just like, uh, you need to give me my lunch. He's like, well, get in line, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they end up shooting the kid in the leg, but he's like, get in line, motherfucker. It's like, it's not your turn to get lunch. He's like, we'll order our food. Then you can you order yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, should we rate it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I wrote five. <laughs> I figured, yeah, uh, about what you were saying. I could still- have gone lower. <laughs> But it was like I said earlier, six point five when I first watched it. That's a, I'm, I'm that's a point and a half drop. I'm sitting at about like a six for it. I think sitting on about a six for it. Yeah. Rewatchability. I don't think I'm ever gonna rewatch this again. <laughs> nah, I'm probably I'm probably not going to either. <laughs> it's enough. I've seen it enough. But hey, fuck it. That happens sometimes. Well, should we jump right into our yeah. next one, dude? Fucking a. So the, I'm gonna. I'll just say this at the beginning. Uh, for uh, so the next movie, Sideways. It's funny is the f- um, first couple times I watched this movie, I actually didn't like it very much. Yeah. Yeah, I just I didn't find it to be that funny, and then I kind of got the. I mean, I I th- I thought Tom and Hate's Church was hilarious, but the rest of it I just I didn't give a fuck about. And mm. now this this time, like watching it. How many times do you think you've seen it? Probably seen it about three times, I think. Same. Um, or, um, no, but maybe this, a little more. This, I would say this time I enjoyed the movie a little bit more. Like, so, I, I did, of the two movies that we watched, I enjoyed this one more. kind of the opposite of dope, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it goes a little up instead of a little down. Um, Yeah, so this Sideways is a 2004 comedy romance, you know. Type movie, romantic comedy, maybe. I guess you can classify it as uh, that. I would say it's more like a, like a, dr- like a drama, dra- like a dramedy. dramedy. Yeah, because it's like it's like a drama, but it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, but there's some romance in there. Um, director Alexander Payne. We got ninety-seven on the Rotten Tomato score. That's a hell of a score, brother. And seventy nine audience. That yeah, the the audience score I I still pretty good. Yeah, but I think it's uh more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, tagline: In search of wine, in search of women, in search of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's cool. Huh? I'm just I, you know I'm gonna say it again. Um, even on this sec this like this current watch. Thomas Hayden Church kind of carries this movie, man. <laughs> like he really kind of does. <laughs> does. Well, yeah, he's he's like the comic relief. But I mean, that's yeah. He's he's the he's the happy go lucky. He's a fucking, but he's yeah. He's the know. ray of sunshine to uh, Paul Giamatti's rainy cloud. Yeah, like they're kind of the odd couple in a way. Yep. <laughs> but he's kind of like a douche. Oh no, him. he's well. That's what he's like. That person that you totally should hate because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> but he's just so he just comes off so likable yeah. in the movie. He just has so much charisma, yeah. and it just like it's just makes it so funny. I know that that's a great dynamic. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know this when I picked it, but this is the 20th anniversary of this film. No shit, isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Yeah, 2004, bro. So. Damn. That's pretty cool. I think they had that. They might have had it in theaters, but I don't know. I didn't follow up on that. Um, We got Academy Award for Best Writing, Adapted Screenplay. Check that out. That's good. Yeah. Their fucking friendship is so funny, dude. (laughs) Like we were just saying. Because Paul Giamatti's depressed. He's divorced. Fucking (laughs) he's not over... His uh, ex-wife, you know, and just, (laughs) 
He's a drunk, but he's kind of a wine connoisseur also. Right, he's he's kind of an arrogant a, prick. Right, yeah. 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 <laughs> writer, fucking trying to get published, and fucking A. I know, and uh, <laughs> Thomas ain't at church. He's like, he's a total opposite. He's, he's just happy to go look at you. He's getting married. He's he's scared to get married. So he's like, he's like, nah, man, fuck all this dumb shit you want to do. Let's go get some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Giamatti, he's like neurotic and like self-conscious, depressed dude that's fucking in churches. He's like the freewheeling fucking guy, just lying all the time to people just to get what he wants and shit. Yep, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's a total, he, he's kind of fitched that uh, arrogant actor archetype, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's just like always putting on a facade with everybody. My favorite is, he, is when he starts banging <laughs> that, that one Asian lady and Sandra Ho, I think her name yeah. is. Yeah, in uh, her real name. Yeah, and uh, he's just like, I oh. think I'm in love with her, dude. He's like, you've known her for two days. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, we should just move here and like, I'll buy a place and you can run. It. Yeah, <laughs> just trying to totally escape his like being completely unrealistic. There's a lot of great dialogue in this film. Yeah, I can't quote any of it but damn dude there's some funny shit oh dude the part that always gives me the biggest laugh is when he takes the big waitress when thomas hayden church takes the big waitress home <laughs> oh yeah and then he and then he leaves his wallet because her fucking husband comes home <laughs> yeah and her husband her husband fucking like is beating the shit out of him and he manages to get out of there and then he fucking makes paul giamatti go get him <laughs> He comes running and then the, all naked. Go, the, at the fucking car. cock smacks against the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and then oh, it was like whenever fucking Giamatti, he's all creeping in there to try to find the wallet. She's like, oh, he's like, oh, you fucked her, you fucked him good, didn't you? When he's fucking, his yeah, wife, he's like, you <laughs> dirty fucking cheating whore, <laughs> you like, whore, you fucked. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Oh man. Another thing I love is that it's just, it's California, bro. And you know, that's where I'm from. Your favorite place, yeah. And you know, it's just cool seeing all that wine country, all that fucking, the backdrop of this whole movie's great. And uh, just all the California landscapes, all that awesome. Makes me miss it, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I want to go back. I'm going to fucking, uh, going to Portland soon, though. Fuck yeah, dude. It's pretty close. <laughs> Comparatively. Um, oh, that one part, whenever fucking Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church, whenever they're going to meet both the chicks at that wine place or whatever, the restaurant or whatever, he's like, if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. <laughs> Yo, I am not drinking fucking Merlot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh shit that that is a funny scene every time they're all fucking testing wine and shit and you know giamatti's got oh, some big thing to say about it and he he'll like poo poo some of it and then thomas hayden shirts i i kind of like it he just <laughs> yeah, comes, yeah he just down the he does that like a few times throughout the whole yeah, fucking movie yeah i, I like it <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to get drunk and fucking hit on women yeah doesn't give a shit about the wine at all <laughs> And I know, like, I like, I do like that, like, uh, when, oh yeah, go ahead. That interaction between them, where Paul G. Man was like, "You ruined our weekend," because he's like, <laughs> Thomas Aiden Church isn't trying to, he's like not trying to golf, he's not trying to go to the spa or do all this stupid shit. That yeah, Paul G. He's like, "No, nah, I just want to fucking lay down the hammer, dude." <laughs> Before he gets married, he just yep. wants to fuck chicks. Um, what I was gonna say is that uh, that scene whenever um, Giamatti's like kind of teaching him how to fucking drink the wine you sniff it and you you swirl it and all that shit and he's like so when do we drink it now <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that part's pretty great um god damn it their friendship is just yeah hilarious. i do like also how uh paul giamatti shows up to Thomas Hayden Church's house, like super late, and he's like lying about traffic and all this other shit. And the reason, the whole reason he showed up late is because he was fucking hungover and he slept in too late. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. 
And the scene, the scene where they uh, where they crash the fucking car is so fucking funny. Yeah, because <laughs> they have to. I can't lose her, dude. I can't lose her. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, because what? Did someone punches him or something? How do you break his nose? Um. Well, so what happens is, is was it that it's one guy? it's the waitress that Paul Giamatti is like falling in love with is. They're like having a picnic, and she's inviting him to go do the this oh, thing it on was the, Sandra. Oh, yeah, who did it? Yeah. yeah. So, so what happens is they're having the picnic, and uh, the two women that they're kind of messing around with are like best friends. And so Paul G. Mount is like, "Oh, we got a we got a wedding to go to on Saturday," and she's like, "What? What wedding?" And then yeah, he lets it. He's like, he "Oh, Thomas Hayden Churches." Yeah, and then she's like, "What?" And then so this the, that's how they end up. Like the it, all it snowball. It's how it snowballs is because she's like you're a piece of shit from for not telling uh, my friend and not telling me and like hiding this from us. She's like you're just as guilty as Thomas Hayden Church, which honestly she's kind of right. Like he's like they've kind of been lying to both these girls this whole time. So, but it was mostly. It was like Thomas Hayden. Well, it's Church. Thomas Hayden. He's fucking but, lying, and then but, Giamatti doesn't like correct him and shit. Yeah, well, he just kind of lets it go because it. he goes along with it because he he likes this girl. But at no point did he ever been like, "Hey, you know, we we need to be honest about this." He just accidentally kind of lets the cat out of the bag, and then he lies to Thomas Hayden Church about it. He's like, "How did she find out?" Oh he's, yeah. Uh, he's like, "It must have been the bartender." Yeah, it must have been the bartender. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so when Sandra Ho finds out, she fucking you lying piece of shit, and she fucking breaks Thomas's nose with the motorcycle. <laughs> That's how he gets his nose oh, broken. Yeah, dude. And then he gets he gets the black eye from uh, the husband when he gets uh, caught fucking his wife. Like yeah, <laughs> the waitress from uh, Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> and um, oh, yeah, that was that's just funny. But yeah, but that's why they need to uh, crash his car because they're gonna lie when he gets home to yeah his that they got in a fiance. car accident yeah yeah yep. that they got a, and they fucking <laughs> they put the brick on the gas <laughs> and the car veers off and yeah and goes. it goes into the ditch yeah <laughs> that's it fucking cracks me up and he's like oh, I don't know it doesn't look like it was good enough so they have to do it again well no at first they like. They kind of running into the tree, and that's oh, when yeah. Thomas Hayden puts he's the like, brake in. He's like, yeah, put your seatbelt on. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what? And then he fucking just crashes into the tree. Yeah, and the second one, they fucking, yeah. That's I do it like how it, like, it all becomes Paul Giamatti. He's like, because he, he, Thomas Hayden Church tells his wife to be that he, he was too drunk, to, and he drove, and that's why they got in the accident. She's looking at him, just shaking her head. Like, <laughs> 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 he's just smiling and waving, yeah. Um. You know, I kind of wanted to fucking get some wine and drink some wine on this episode. That would have been kind of funny. That would have been, yeah. But, uh. Just didn't work out, man. Yeah. It's, but, uh. I had that thought like weeks back, but. Um. Oh, uh, yeah. And then there's like that scene towards the end. Well, they, they mentioned this bottle earlier in the film. He's like, what? She was like, what's in your collection? Oh, yeah. And he yeah. has that fucking bottle of wine that is supposed to be perfect at this moment in time or whatever. She's like, why aren't you opening it? He's like, I'm waiting for a special occasion. And he just ends up drinking it from a styrofoam well, cup well, and it, shit. Yeah, that's what's so funny is because um, I think he eats a, like you said, he's a neurotic person. Are gonna like break down their personalities, right? And so like he's, it's, change is really hard for him, and it becomes obvious like you know because Thomas Hayden Church is a go with the flow kind of guy, and uh, Paul Giamatti he gets like mad that um, their plans are constantly changing. He's like, no, no, this is this was what we were supposed to do on this day, and right? So he's a person that is really adversive to change. Um, but the thing that sets him over the edge on the bottle is when he sees his ex-wife and he's like, Oh, you know, congratulations. I'm glad you're happy. She's like, I have something else to tell you. I'm pregnant. That's what sends him over the edge. She's like, Oh, oh yeah. Oh, congratulations. Good for you. Cause he doesn't, he was supposed to go to the like after party dinner and that he doesn't even end up going. He literally dry. He's like, I have to go to like some fast food restaurant. Yeah. He literally goes straight home, gets the bottle and goes into some fast food restaurant. And he's literally just starts drinking it out of a styrofoam <laughs> cup. 
Because that was the thing that broke him. He's like, oh, okay, well, f- it's fine if she's with somebody else. But then, like, the fact that she's having a kid, that, like, makes it too real for him. And he got rejected for his fucking publishing. Yep, he gets the book. His book was, didn't get published. Because his book was bad. <laughs> like, that was what it boils down to. It's like, he's not a good writer. Like, <laughs> Well, that that one scene early on in the movie where he asked Thomas Sager if he read it. He's like, what do you think of that new ending? He's like, oh, it was great. It was perfect. He was like, it's. I didn't change it. <laughs> He's just lying <laughs> yeah, about reading his yeah. book. Yeah, it's so funny. <clears throat> yeah. So it is kind of like a character study on these these two guys. Well, they're they're um they're honestly kind of both pieces of shit, but in yeah, different in their ways. Own ways. Yeah, yeah, like because Thomas Hayden, he's just like. Thomas Hayden, and and the thing is too, I I kind of I really noticed it on this watch. If we're gonna if we're gonna get into this, sure. they're um they're Let's both get into it. They're both actually really selfish people, right? Yeah, just in different ways. Like Thomas Hayden Church, he's like a, that. I can just do whatever I want, right? And that that's what makes him selfish. Just, he just he just moment by moment just like does what feels good to him. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Paul Giamatti is the well. Poor me, pity me, like, and so, like, it's like when they stop by, the, he doesn't stop by his mom to see her, it's her fucking birthday the next day. He literally stops by there to steal money from her, like, <laughs> I know, it's that like, was, that was harsh. It was like, that was like really low. And then she asked him, do you need some money <laughs> at, the, at the end of that whole scene? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's, uh, you know. That's like it. Set, it kind of sets them both up because, like, well, that's at first you're like, oh wow, uh, Paul Giamatti is a piece of shit in this. And then, like, uh, a few scenes later, Thomas Hayden Church is trying to fucking cheat on his fiance. <laughs> and like, oh, they're both pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's like uh, that's kind of what's interesting uh, about Paul Giamatti just being this really kind of arrogant snob. And he's got, like, kind of no business being, like, because he's not rich. He's not, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, he it's kind of like he puts on a facade a lot of the time of the person he wants to be, it seems like to me. Whereas it's like, no, dude, you're a fucking school teacher. You're a school teacher that drinks wine. Like, he's like, he, but he, like, kind of fancies himself as, like, well, I'm a, I'm a writer. And I, I know a lot about wine, you know. It's a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's very interesting to me. I wonder if he like really that. is into why, because he really fucking nailed that character, you know. I mean, he's a fucking good actor, dude. Paul yeah, Giamatti is a fucking good actor. I mean, in the same year, ah, uh, he was in NWO as a person who loves black people, and then in Twelve Years a Slave, is <laughs> one that hates him. Like, have you seen fucking- that one? I haven't seen Twelve Years a Slave. I, pick, I just I picked it. I made Mike watch it before. Oh, dude, that was probably <laughs> for Black History Month. That was probably rough for Mike. Yeah. It was fucking. That's a good ass movie, dude. I believe it. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about it. But yeah, I saw the, his most recent movie, The Holdovers. You heard about that one? It was I. It was cool. It was I. He's yeah. got like a wonky eye in it. It's fucking weird. <clears throat> there, there is one thing though. Um... Like the waitress from the restaurant, and like that whole romance between her and Paul. At no point, like, did I really find it believable. I think that's like for me, that's one of the. You, with the the fat one, or the other? No, no, I'm talking the one that Paul Giamatti, the blonde one, the blonde oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like their romance just isn't believable to me at all. Oh, okay. Like I like that was one thing in the movie. It's just like, eh. it's just like they don't have any chemistry. That was my take on it. I was just like, I. It, it was just the the. the I don't scene. know if I agree with that, but okay. No, I, that's my <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking. Sh- I'm gonna shoot my opinion, man. Like <laughs> yeah. And honestly, like the, I, those were the most boring parts of the movie to me. Is like when Thomas was gone, it was just like them or Paul. Like sometimes, and I mean, I think it maybe even intentional. Like because like you really get that see that like depressed side of his character like when he walks all the way to the and he's drunk he walks all the way to the restaurant to see the waitress and she's not there so he just sits with the bartender and sell clothes it's like to see like kind of how like kind of sad and pathetic he really yeah, is yeah, and yeah, i think is. it's it's purposeful but it's also those are the places in the movie where i really feel like it drags a little bit especially like the scenes with like when it's just him and the waitress i don't know i just didn't find it to be 
I found it to just kind of drag. That's mm. just my personal opinion on it. How about that scene when he drinks the spit bucket, bro? <laughs> Dude, that scene is wild. <laughs> That's right after he got rejected for his book publishing. Yep, where where uh, well, it's, um, t- two things happened where it was like uh, he lost the waitress because she found out like uh, he kind of been him and his friend had been lying to him the whole time, right? And then he got rejected for the book. I love he how he, like the one he's like it's just a tasting, sir. Yeah. He's, he's like, like, this is not a bar. Pour me a full fucking glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just dumps that whole um, fucking spit fucking yep, the whole, jug on him. Yep, the oh, fucking, the, himself. the tasting dump. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so funny. Well, people spit in there. They they swish it around in their mouth and they spit in there. Dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> it was so wild. I believe. I mean, I'm not a wine. It was so God, wild. Man. I've done a wine tasting before. I did it uh, Maynard's wine up there in Arizona, bro. Oh no shit, that's cool. yeah. We went to the uh, the Caduceus Cellars and tasted his fucking wine. There's a video of it on YouTube. Any who's are we at that point? Oh yeah, I think so, man. I think so. This this movie's fun. I'm gonna I'm torn between seven point five and eight. <laughs> so. That's uh, that's the range I'm in. I could go eight, you know, yeah. on a good day. I'm a I'm sitting at like I want to give it a seven, but there were places in this movie I found to be boring. I'm like between like six point five and seven is where I'm sitting. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's about the characters. It's you know, yeah. It's that kind of a movie. I mean, that, I mean honestly, you, if I was to give it a seven, I would say it's probably mostly because of Thomas Hayden Church. <laughs> he just makes me fucking laugh <laughs> so much, dude. He is. He's, he's so my fucking, favorite part. He's, he's my so f- great in this. Yeah, he just he just steals every scene. I was just like, man, it's kind of sad that uh, he doesn't have more like big roles like this. Like you, I mean. I think he, do, he does a lot more work behind the scenes than he does, like, acting. And it's, it made me sad. I know. What so, else is he in? He's the Sandman. I know that. He's Sandman. He's also the main bad guy in the George of the Jungle movie. Oh, yeah, dude. Yo. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's been in some pretty big movies. He just, like, I feel like he... He's not that leading man. I, it's, not really. even that, it's not even that I don't think he could be. I think it more just, like, he purposefully chose to be more like on the produ- producer and director side of things. He was in the Peanut Butter Falcon. Oh, he does show up in there for a little bit, yeah. I've only seen it once. That's a good movie, though. He was in Tombstone. Oh, yeah. Yep, he's one of the uh, he's one of the bad guys in Tombstone, yeah. Uh, yeah, Hellboy. I don't remember him being in Hellboy. Uh, cardboard Boxer, Killer Joe, Acid Man. Yeah, I don't know most of these movies. Any who's rewatchability. I'd watch it again. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I just recently watched it twice, you know. All right. But so I'll give it some time, but yeah, yeah. I will revisit this one. One thing left to do, buddy old pal, this for as many hey, fucking I- for as many movies as I had at the top of this episode, we kind of fucking this is a short episode. Yeah. <laughs> I think, Not also, too short. I think also because just because it's been so long since we, I know we gotta we gotta pick the next. We're movie out of touch. Out. Is that what you're saying? We're out of touch. <laughs> Did you? Well, it's hard to deep dive comedy movies too because there's not usually not as much stuff to break down. Not as much substance. Um, do you know what you're picking? I have no idea yet, man. All right, I guess I'll go. Uh, this is one that I have not seen before. It's one that someone suggested. Shout out to Matt from work. Um, he suggested I, I we fucking check this movie out. I believe I brought it up before and you said you haven't seen it either. Okay. Um, it's got uh, <laughs> it's got the old Billy Bob Thornton. Oh shit! Okay. I'm talking about Sling Blade. <laughs> oh yeah, shit. So I've only I only seen parts of Sling Blade. Okay. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, you know, what? yeah. I don't know. Actually, I, I, I th- there's a lot of people that talk about this movie, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I hear about it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I hear about it all the time. I mean, I even know the references from it, but I've never actually right, seen it all the right, way. Right. Same. 
Um, so yeah. I'm actually, it's a movie that you've seen, but I have not. All right. Because somebody else suggested that did I watch it. Did I like it. it? You did? It's a, it's from your current favorite director. Uh, I'm going to, I want to pick poor things, man. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, dude. Cause I, I had somebody else be like, I think you'd really like this movie that like kind of knows me. And I was like, all right. I was like, Kevin said I should watch this movie too. So yeah, I'm gonna pick poor things, man. Oh, fuck so yeah, dude. Sling blade and poor things. I've already seen it twice. This oh shit. This okay. Will be my third time, Damn. <laughs> and I'm excited, dude. Uh, it's, I'm excited for you to watch it. For the mostly, but I'm I'm also <laughs> excited to watch it again. <laughs> I actually bought it on my Voodoo account, but I do think it's on Hulu. Fuck yeah! So there you have it, folks. Poor things and sling blade, sling things. Poor <laughs> blades. Poor blades. <laughs> <laughs> Poor blades. We'll see you next time on Kevin and Drew Peace Talk Movies. Out, guys. It's fun to be back. We'll see you next time. We're back, motherfucker. <laughs> Back <laughs> and I do do cocaine. <laughs> That's not what I was going for. I'm, going, I'm back in the saddle again. We started off the episode with a song, That's and now true. we're ending yeah. it with a song, classic rock song. Does that technically make me gay? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>